Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back down the rabbit hole. I am your host, Monty Hook, and today I'm joined in the studio in Bali by Livia. Livia Devi, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for inviting me yeah, to thank you very much. the podcast. I know this is going to be an interesting conversation. Um, you know, people, my audience knows that I'm kind of in the spiritual world a little bit. I've come from a very business background and lived in that world. Um, but I love being in, in here in Bali because I get to embrace and cultivate my spiritual practice and uh, go deep on many things and have really interesting conversations, which we're really blessed to have here in Bali. It's really cool to meet really interesting, amazing people. Um, so first of all, where are you from? Well, I was born in Romania. Okay. Um, so I'm from Romania and yep. uh, I lived uh, most of my life in other countries in Europe. And uh, one year and a half ago, I decided to come to Bali. So. Yeah. Cool. So uh, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on is because you have a very interesting, um, you talk about ascension, ascension of consciousness and ascending humanity and um, and you talk about that in terms of different dimensions and, you know, I mean, I've studied a little bit of stuff like this and I think people see bits and pieces and they hear about 5D and but very rarely do we hear about 7D and all the other Ds and all this. So <laughs> I'm really interested to learn from you. Um, but what are you known for? Like, how do you articulate what you do and what you're known for? Yeah, so um, I am a mentor and I'm teaching people about heart consciousness. And uh, also I am um, a messenger, if I can say like that, from the higher dimension. So uh, I'm transmitting light codes and uh, different uh, teachings from higher dimension of existence through a collective consciousness that they are called the Arcturians. So um, part of my um, service to this planet is um, just to transmit uh, different uh, perceptions of perspectives about heart consciousness and um, to make people open up to uh, different realizations about themselves, about the reality they are living, about the world, society. And I found it very interesting and I'm very passionate about what I'm doing because I'm blending, you know, my passion with service yeah. and uh, also I'm bridging, you know, spirituality with business as well. So um, it is a beautiful way of delivering, um, you know, a different perspective on um, life and um, evolution. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> so <clears throat> let me just give the audience a little bit of context because, I mean, what you're talking about with uh, <clears throat> getting, you, you know, uh, getting messages from higher dimensions, it <clears throat> excuse me, might sound a little bit kooky to a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So just explain that because I think most people understand... <clears throat> Um, you know, having work with clairvoyance or psychics and they're channeling uh, or they're a medium or they can connect to spirits or... And my kind of assumption, my naive assumption, um, based on my limited knowledge is I, I think that the human has... the Humans have the capacity to tap into other senses, right? It's just that we're not attuned to it. And I think especially over the last however many hundreds of years... It's been, you know, it's been drilled out of us by society as well. We've been really been numbed from these gifts and these abilities. Um, when I was young, I saw spirits and I've had a lot of experiences. I've had visions. I've spoken to a bear for two hours and, you know, I've had all sorts of kooky, weird experiences. So it's not weird to me. Um, but how do you explain what you do? Like, are you channeling are there messages coming through you just give us a bit of an insight because i'm really interested you know how that is for you so um this way of transmission is indeed an uh, activated ability so every one of us has this ability of connecting to different aspects of self so for example in meditation when people are meditating um, and when you are sinking deeper into that empty space you have the opportunity to connect with your higher consciousness which is an aspect of yourself uh, and I'm using meditation as an example because um, the way we are connecting to our self uh, through the meditation process, we can even go a little bit deeper and start connecting to different realms and different civilizations. And mm -hmm. it's like how we are, you know, tuning the, the frequencies like a radio station, you know, mm -hmm. that you are looking for a, for different, um, you know, <laughs> you know how we were doing in the past, looking <laughs> for, for music and, you know, for <laughs> a theater 
play and so on. So it's the same. We are tuning in the frequency into different uh, dimensions. And then we are receiving messages that we know that we couldn't uh, had that the knowledge or I'm receiving messages that I didn't know about different technology mm. and uh, can go even very, very deep. So. <laughs> so are you getting messages for specific people in the work that you do or are you just getting very generalized message about humanity and things that, you know, they're asking you to talk about and share? Both. Yeah. But mainly I'm, I'm speaking, like I receive messages about what is happening on the planet, like, uh, you know, general messages about the events and situations that are happening on the planet, but also very specific messages mm. for one individual depends on, uh, you know, what is the audience that I'm relating to. Yeah. And so, it's very much part of my guiding system, you know, like how I'm navigating my life and how I'm guided. I'm very much in connection to, um, to this higher consciousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just want to just kind of make a point here because a, a lot of people who've never had the kind of experiences that maybe we're talking about, certainly not the ones you're talking about, um, you know, they seem kind of rare with mm -hmm. um, the number of humans that are kind of attuned to it or that they're aware, they're aware of. But the way I kind of think about it is, um, to me, you know, people think, oh, well, that can't be real. Or, you know, you know, that's kooky or whatever. The way I think about it is it doesn't matter if how that message is being delivered. Like it's the message that's important. The delivery message comes through different people in different ways. It comes to me in meditations. It comes to you through, you know, through this channel. Some people get talk to spirits. To me, what I say is I don't, it doesn't really matter how the message is coming through. It's just let the message come through. Right. Yes. And it, it is a, like a different method of accessing, you know, who we are. Uh, doesn't matter, you yeah. know, the, how we are receiving the, the message, because some people, you are right, like some people are uh, looking in their outside reality and, um, you know, connecting to seeing messages, you know, in in like through songs and, you know, messages, synchronicities and coincidences. And uh, if you are following that flow of synchronicity, you get to the same point compared like, you know, if I'm receiving a message and will, yeah. will get me to the same point where you are. So yeah. it's just a different way of uh, receiving. Yeah. Yeah. So is it, do you feel like this is something that all humans should be tuning into? Like we all should be learning to... You know, I mean, you can just call it intuition if you like. Like, should we really be cultivating this? Like, what's the benefits for us? I feel um, I, I don't really like like that everyone has to do it or should should doing it. It's just a journey, you know. It's a just just a journey that is unfolding at different stages of our life. And some people, you know, will go through this life journey and they will never access it. You know, they will never have that. It doesn't. It's, it's not wrong. It's just a decision that. We are somehow taking, you know, at different levels mm. that are a little bit beyond of this reality. So um, the intuition is, uh, you know, intuition is the tuition from our higher, higher consciousness, from the higher self. And um, it's just a part of knowing that you can't explain. It's like bypassing mm. a little bit the mind framework, you know. And the intuition is like there is a knowing that it's very much led from your heart. And, you know, even, even if things are not making any logical sense in your reality, if you are following that, then you are, you know, going a little bit beyond and, and seeing that, wow, like this made so much sense after. So you are following, you know, that stream of flow and synchronicity and alignment and you get onto the other side by going into the unknown, but understanding that at the end of it, you are like you took the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, the intuition is, is um, I like to see it as a pathway, you know, in between the heart and the mind yeah. and is what is creating the alignment. And the more we are tapping more in our hearts and um, we are letting go of control, we are letting go of trying to understand how things will unfold. We are letting go yeah. of, uh, you know, different ways. And we are just tapping into that trust yeah. that, you know, the universe is going to take us the most amazing magical moments and, this is what we are living. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel, I, I mean, my journey, especially over the last five years, has been really, um, yeah, not trying to control everything. And, uh, I mean, I've always been very uh, success-driven in the past. It mm -hmm. was always about I have to achieve something, I have to build something, um, I have to get something. But it, it's, it's, it's always been uh, the little, little boy inside of me trying to prove to the world, you know, like, look at me, you know, trying to, trying to feel something. And the, the more that I've learned to just um, be not attached to, 
you know, what the business is I'm creating and just let it kind of flow more and surrender to things falling apart as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's peace in that anyway, but then you're also with that kind of grace and that ease that you're allowing for, well, you're kind of creating space for bigger things or higher purposes or, or whatever, right? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, even things are falling apart. This means that they didn't have a good foundation from the very beginning. Yeah. And everything is, um, you know, is happening for a reason. And change is the only constant in life. So we have to surrender to change because this is how there are so much magic and miracles that we are unlocking on the other side when yeah. we are recreating something based on new values and new way of relating to our reality and you know even businesses when we are creating businesses in if i can say in the old paradigm when yeah. people are driven by ego power fame money profit you know um you there is so much effort that you are putting in that business yeah. there is so much control there is like mm. so much of you that is going there and when you are creating a business based on unconditional love and fun and playfulness but also service and you know you are bringing like divine alignment divine service divine uh, commitment like divine um reciprocity there are so mm. many values that you can put at the foundation of your new business you are not putting so much effort into yeah. it because you understand you are co-creating. And it's just you know? yeah, and allowing to follow the feeling. Like this podcast, yeah. you know, like you, you talk to podcast experts and they're like, you know, you need to niche this and, you know, you need to have this marketing funnel, this, and, you know, it needs to be very specific to what your business is. Me, I just feel like, mm, fuck it, I feel like doing a <laughs> podcast. And I like the idea of having deep, meaningful conversations. Mm -hmm. I don't have any marketing agenda with this. Like, I mean, sure, it's going to help me in my brand and all of that. But I don't really have any, like, you know, trying to manipulate mm -hmm. what I'm talking about to, to try to sell somebody into something, right? It's just, it's been very organic and kind of flow. And I know that this is going to lead to bigger and better things. And that to me was just like a knowing. It was just like, yeah, I'm just going to follow the feeling and... Yeah. So how do people, how do people tune into that? Like how do people let go of, cause it's very difficult to, uh, and I struggle with this all the time as well. Like I, like when I'm doing business planning, I go kind of got to check, check in with myself and go, why am I, why am I really wanting to, why am I planning this? Why am I really doing this? Mm -hmm. How do people tune into, into that, which is kind of, uh, yeah. And tuning into the more authentic self, right? How do people cultivate that? Yeah, so this is a process of deconstruction, you know, and it's not an easy process because we have to unlearn everything that we have learned, and especially in business, you know, like if we have learned to do business the old ways in creating like, um, you know, funnels and, uh, you know, different strategies and NLP and, you know, like the different strategies that are used yeah. in the marketing, it's like we need to let go of everything yeah. we have learned and I, start to... I, I think those things have validity, but they shouldn't be the driver. Exactly. It's just a little bit of a tool which helps you but it's not the thing that pushes you or drives you. Yeah. Exactly. It should be an, another tool, but yeah. not something that you are, um, you know, using it as a, as a main thing, you know, in, in how you are leading. You are not leading with that. You are mm. leading with with other values that are part, part of your business. For example, for your podcast, you are leading with playfulness and opening mm. and curiosity and exploration. And, you know, there are, you have like probably different people that are watching this and they are taking different things from, from yeah, them, you sure. know. But it's still helping them in a very easy flowing way because mm. there is no framework to it. There yeah. is no template. But in business, we do, we do need to have a template. We do, need, we do need to have like tools, but become more creative and, you know, have the spontaneity and creativity and flow yeah. and excitement you know because some people are getting like so much driven by oh i want to have this revenue or i want to uh, access you know this uh, stream of people or i want to have like a seven figure business in this time frame and so on and then they are you know are putting so much effort into that yeah. and it, it's effort is nice if it's joyful and if it creates excitement you know like if you are driven by good values then it's okay to do it but yeah. it, you get stuck at, at some point so how you can tap into that uh, stream of authentic relating to yourself is just like deconstructing everything that you thought you knew and and being more like 
curious about what are the new things that are available for you to learn because as you know the business is evolving as we are evolving and you know uh, there are many aspects that we didn't learn you know like we didn't know yet there is that element of curiosity and innocence and like discovering more and up upgrading your business with new things that you didn't knew before you know many many, many business owners like i know how to do it i did it for 20 years yeah that's me. that was me yeah you know and then it's like okay but your audience like your clients and, your and the world is changing and the world is changing and the exactly. way people buy is changing, changing yeah, yeah everything is changing so then then the question is how do we navigate change yeah. and how do we make change our best friend and how do we co-create with change how do we create a business in an mm. ever-changing world because yeah. especially now like everything is changing so fast and it's accelerating yeah. And I do feel that part of, you know, intuition and flow and, you know, curiosity and depth that you are bringing and your unique message that you are bringing. And every time when I'm thinking about business, like what is your uniqueness? You know, what is the message that you are here to deliver to others? Mm. Because the business, it is a tool on its own. It's, it's something that you are offering to others, right? And in, in, in exchange, you are receiving a compensation in money or currency, whatever. Uh, energy whatever that is so but the, what is the message what is the uniqueness what is the you know the unique element factor that is mm. really dri like driving your business to yeah. forward so this is why you know people are get bored of some business that are opening other things that's, and so that's on. like me that's me <laughs> for know? sure yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's it's that like, okay what is and in that discovery, you know, in, when we are creating so many businesses, actually, we are going a little bit deeper into our soul because we are discovering who we truly are. And the business become like, you know, reflections of our mm. souls. And it's interesting to take that journey because um, then we are going a little bit deeper into the essence of yeah. who we are. Yeah, it's like yeah. businesses, can, business can be, entrepreneurship can be the gateway mm -hmm. to really a deep spiritual journey, that's for sure. And yeah. it is an initiation. Yeah. You know, there are levels and levels of initiations. You yeah. know, it's like if you have a business, everything is, is falling apart and it's like, oh, we have to start from zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an initiation. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I've, I, I'm have i really at peace with the idea that I could lose everything tomorrow. Like, I'm I'm cool with it now. Like, I'm really, I'm really okay with it. Because um, I, know, I know what I'm capable of and I've built many businesses and I've just got, it's nice for me to have that in my back pocket. But I think... That level of um, peace and mm -hmm. kind of grace is the very thing that will mean I don't lose everything. Exactly, right? and actually, you are not losing anything because Ex you yeah. know you, you you don't have an identity created based on your business. So yeah. you know everything is in in the center of yourself. Yeah. And that's the thing that I've struggled with the most is because I had my first business when I was eight, and I've always been an entrepreneur, and it's like, and it's, I'm constantly checking in with myself and how I'm articulating things and how I'm writing things and how I write in blogs and how I talk in videos. It's like, because I, I want to be really mindful that because my identity in the past has been so attached to being a successful entrepreneur. It's been so attached. And now I'm kind of like really doing a lot of work to unravel that because it's like, I, f I know there's, I'm always going to be an entrepreneur and I'm building businesses, but I know there's something else and something bigger. And, and it's like, how can I tune into that? if I'm so attached to that identity of being a successful entrepreneur, that's a thread that is hard to, hard to break. Uh, and I think people need to be really mindful mm -hmm. of that, how powerful that thread to their identity can be. Yes. Because it's very limiting. It's very limiting and can be quite controlling because you are limiting yourself, your freedom, your creativity to one yeah. string. And that's a very interesting question that you asked, you know, like how can you... Um, tap into the other stream when when you are you have this this big threat with, with the identity of your business and i feel like this is a journey of the soul you know it's a journey of exploration it's you don't have to be, have one or another this mm. is the first thing you know you don't have to give up of everything in order to go on the spiritual path yeah. and you know become a monk or yeah. <laughs> going in himalayas that's not the way is is how to balance it it's mostly about the balance and curiosity and exploration of what are the aspects of your soul aspects of yourself that you didn't touch base 
um, uh, and are somehow reflecting in the identity that you have created or are, is linked mm. with the business. And you are working with, with both together and you are bringing actually the, the potentiality from this um, identity into the exploration of aspects of self that might deconstruct the identity. Yeah. So if this makes sense, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like a navigation and you know how to balance in between these two and there is not one or another. And the more you are accepting that, you know, you are, um, you are everything mm. and you are part, you know, you are part of every aspect of your reality is, is coming onto you. Um, then you are not choosing anymore one or another. You are becoming more relaxed into yeah. everything. If this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And you're just tuning into what what was always there anyway. And and the question is, like, who are you beyond that identity? You yeah. know, like when if that, for example, is gone tomorrow. Yeah. And then this is where the exploration starts step by step. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you mentioned before that you get messages for, you know, the 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 for humanity. So what the fuck's going on in twenty what happened in twenty twenty? <laughs> <laughs> Good the, question, but seems like you might have the answer. Well, 2020 was a big year of transformation and transition. And, yeah. you know, everything that we have experienced on this planet with COVID and, um, you know, all everything that all the events that happened, I always seeing, I see the potentiality of it, you know, because people are, as you said, you know, the beginning, uh, people are awakening and people through this lockdown and, um, you know, everything that we experienced, they allocated more time for themselves and they got the opportunity to spend more time with their families and friends yeah. and, and sit um, still with themselves. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, like going a little bit deeper and many, uh, many people actually connect to me and they said, like, I'm taking this as an opportunity to yeah. Um, go on a on a soul quest and just go a little bit deeper than yeah. understanding who I am yeah. things that I didn't have before so I always see I saw 2020 as a year of transition and transformation and a great awakening that happened mm. and moving on to 2021 uh, this doesn't mean that the challenges will still be you know global economical social political challenges I think it's going to get worse yes because <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> it, it will but we have to see both sides of the coin yeah. you know and and to see how we can we as you know um people that are fully in, involved and engaged with the reality you know and like we are a little bit beyond what is happening mainstream and 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 the mainstream population how we can inspire others yeah. to take inspired actions and um you know to to co-create at a different level than they're actually doing and this is what's happening people are awakening and in this great awakening it's like okay, what am I here to do? How I can, how I can, you know, shift whatever is happening inside of me at the yeah. soul level and how I can help others, you know, and there is a lot of inspiration that is coming and people are actively participating into this yeah. together and co-creating a but reality that we want to live. I think, I mean, what's given permission to a lot of people is just the, the in the chaos it's like people are like, well, it's already screwed anyway, so I may as well, what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose now? Right. But for me, it's been like, I've just been mind blowingly optimistic, right? It's like, I see all the things going on. It's like, yeah, I, I get it. But I just, I kind of just know what's on the other side. Now, that is probably just a potential. There's a lot of things that humanity has to work through. Um, and I, I want to come to maybe get your insights on some specific things because I don't know what messages you get, <laughs> but um, I kind of feel like, and this is where, you know, the controversy starts, but, um, you know, I, I do feel like there are people on this planet who have a lot of power who don't have genuine agendas for humanity. They have agendas for control, power, depopulation, um, you know, for those main reasons and they have way too much power and control. Now, what's really tricky about that is that it's so freaking big, like people look at it and go, no, that can't be happening. No, Bill, Bill Gates is a humanitarian. I'm using him as the, as, as the scapegoat, but, you know, he's the obvious example because that's where there's a lot of controversy. It's like people are saying, Bill Gates is this and other people are like, no, he's... You know, he's he's from God, you know, it's like um, regardless of whether it's him, I feel like there are p people in with that level of power who are manipulating humanity. Yes. Right. What is your 
personal view on that? And do you get messages about these kind of things? Yes. And uh, I do get messages about it. And my personal view is that uh, there is a great manipulation and a, and a new world agenda that is, is mm. happening and is rolling. And this is increasing the fear and control and manipulation around humanity. And this is this is their hidden agenda, which is not very hidden anymore. Now it's like so upfront. And uh, they are just trying to take control of, of, of everyone. And how they can do that is through uh, depriving people of their needs, you know, their, their primal yeah. needs and uh, taking, taking their freedom away. And this is very easy when, when you can control ma ma masses, you know, like you can easily control others by taking their freedom, taking their primal needs and, uh, you know, activating so much fear into them. Yeah. So then people are confused. Like there are many people that are confused and they don't know what to believe anymore and the ones that are still numb well, and, as you said and what's scary is that they these people still think that they're free for the most part yes it's like you're told to wear a mask which psychologically is taking your own power away yes but you still think that the government is acting on your behalf in, in your best interest and that's that's the scary part of it Yes, right, and people, this, this shows the level of manipulation that yeah. humanity uh, like experienced for thousands of years yeah. that is embedded in our DNA and it's embedded in like for for a submission and for not saying anything. It's, it's like people are not are not they don't have that drive within themselves to say no, you mm. know, to create boundaries. I, and I, I feel it's it's a journey at the individual and collective level because this is the breakthrough that is happening, you know, in many people at the moment. They are breaking through those limitations. Yeah. And even if they had been programmed to to uh, respond in a different way, they start to break through that program now. Yeah. It, it's, it, it is a journey that is unfolding and I see many people awakening to that realization. It's like, wait, wait so, a minute. So do you feel like, the, uh, I mean, for myself and many people and especially the people that we know, you know, we're all saying that 2020 is, you know, some kind of tipping point for humanity, right? It's like we're going to now start going in the other direction. As you said, more people are, are, are awakening. Do you feel like we're in a good place like we're actually moving in the in the right direction like are you are you really optimistic about what's possible for humanity there are many scenarios about what's possible yeah. for humanity okay. and this is the thing that i really want to bring into the awareness of, of people that are listening and watching this podcast is that there are multiple frequencies and multiple uh, scenarios of what can happen mm. and now takes it is our responsibility to choose wisely yeah. so when we are choosing we are choosing the frequency that we want to experience and the reality that we want to experience and I know probably there are many pe people that they feel so disempowered and they don't know what frequency or vibration is and probably they don't know it's like how am I going to do that I do want to create a better world and mm. I do want to to experience a different reality but how can I do that and the question is this is where you start you know the journey of the heart consciousness and mm -hmm. you start to tune into your heart and soul is like and and take like very simple decisions and choices in life it's like is this feeling good to me or not you know yeah. it's like very simple intuition the decision in life and and then you start to say no and create very very clear boundaries and you know like start to speak your truth but people don't know who who they are what their truth is and they are like taking from from the outside reality you know other people beliefs and yeah. um, they are creating you know a belief system they are operating many many of people are operating from you know a belief system and conditioning layers that are not theirs yeah. they are thinking that what the majority is thinking and they're taking decisions from that standpoint so what i what i think and what i feel personally is that there are many possible scenarios yeah. and we get to choose what we want to experience yeah. and the collective the more the, the collective consciousness of this planet is focused on one direction this will be the reality that the majority are going to experience and is that what you're seeing through this last year especially you've seen that shift in consciousness where it's moving in the right direction yes that's what you feel i saw this i see the yeah. split in okay. between the third dimension and the like fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness yeah. like if i if i can say with people that you know are still in the old paradigm and metrics of yeah. fear and control and manipulation and the ones that are getting out of that and it's like wait a minute there is yeah. something else out well, there we'll come back to the explanations of the <laughs> 3d and the 4d and the 5d and because i want to learn as well but um i kind of feel like there's a few groups of people right there's there's people like you who uh which is a small group of small group of humanity which are the messengers right 
and really opening up this conversation. And then I feel like at the other end, there's people who are just really happy living in the matrix, mm -hmm. right? They're just really happy living there. They don't want to, they don't want that to be rattled, right? Yes. Then there's probably a group like me in the middle where I'm connected to you and I feel your message and I get it and I've had my own experiences, but maybe I have a way to communicate to the people who are in the matrix, mm -hmm. right? And maybe yes. get them to start asking questions and do their own research and because um, it can be overwhelming for people. Like yes. people who are in the matrix and they hear somebody like you talk, it's like, what? It's like <laughs> it, it's worlds apart. It is. Right? So how do you how do you navigate that? Like are you is that is that just mean you're just working with people who are very open open to the conversation or is that something you've had to kind of learn? So um I came from the metrics. I worked 15 years for corporations, uh, for big IT companies. And when I had my awakening, my consciousness has shifted and I started tapping in all these ab abilities that I'm speaking today with you. So in my, uh, you know, the people that are coming in my reality and the ones that are ready to receive these type of teachings, they are ready and open yeah. and they they left the third dimension like they, they left the old paradigm they they took like maybe 10 20 years of of healing journey in the dark night of the soul and they got onto the other side and they are like okay i'm ready for the next what is next for me yeah. so then this these people are coming in my reality and i'm not doing much about it because somehow my the way I'm transmitting and the frequency of the mm. is not reaching people that are on the mainstream on the third in the old paradigm, the third yeah. dimension. So the ones that are navigating, you know, when you said there are people that are fully not, not awakened and numb and they don't really want to know anything about this. There are people like you, which are, and these are third dimension. There are people like you that are in between, you know, and it's like you are the bridge in between, yeah. you know, the third and the fifth. And I'm not living in the dimension. matrix, don't get me wrong. No, no. But I think I, I have a way to communicate to Yes, yeah. yes. And there are people like me that are more into the fourth and fifth dim uh, stream of consciousness and I can't even access the, the, the third yeah. dimension at all. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to go back. That makes sense, I understand. <laughs> even yeah. if I go through the rabbit hole, I can't yeah. go back to the 3D. <laughs> I understand. So let's talk about the um, dimensions. So, you know, to somebody who's uneducated, mm. You know, three dimensions we're talking about this way, this way, and this way, right? That's that's kind of it. And then you add in a fourth dimension, which is time in one direction. And then yes. fifth dimension is time in no direction. So I like that. I like how you introduce the concept of time and space into yeah. explanation of dimensional existence. I was trying to make it like, you know, as, as for everyone. So the third dimension is very much connected to our physical body and our linear existence. You know, mm. the concept and time and space is perceived linear. So, you know, we are looking at the time. Today is one o'clock, you know, in three hours or in two hours will be like, you know, this and, time. And, and, and we're really slaves to the senses and, and the clock. Exactly. Basically. And time. And yeah. we are in a race against time, yeah. you know, and we are trying to make, to fit everything in one, one, one day. And, you know, people in the third dimension, they are not, like they are, they are not very much connected to their body and their hearts, their feelings, their yeah. emotional body. Um, there is a disconnection between the mind and the body. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, in the third dimension, there are like life that is perpetuating in the same cycle. And we are, we are not, we are creating reality by default. So we are waking up in the same reality, going to the mm -hmm. work, you know, living, you know, uh, yeah, working, having, meeting our families, coming back, sleep, you know, wake up the next day is the same reality. Then there are people on in the fourth dimension that are accessing a different stream of consciousness where the perception about their reality is changing and they realize that it's a little bit more than that, than just having a linear existence. And many people through plant medicine journeys, they start to access the fourth bridge, the fourth, the fourth mm -hmm. dimension where, because the plant medicine is an access point to that and mm -hmm. nothing, nothing else, you know? So then you start to understand that, oh, you know, you start to have like glimpses within the, the matrix of, of, of existence and you start to understand that I'm not only this physical body, there is so much more than that. Mm. And you, you tap into different... Well, actually, that's, the, that's reality. Yeah. And this is made up. Well, you know, it's like, it's, it's a different... You start to tap into different version of yourself. Yeah. And uh, this is a journey of consciousness. So 
um, you are able to tap into past, present, future realities. You start to go a little bit deeper in your multidimensionality, you know, like what, what, who you are, your consciousness exists in different versions of you. And then on the fifth dimension, you take all these learnings and teachings, you're fully integrated in your physical body. And then, then there is no turning back to the third dimension. Mm. And you can't even like, you can't put breadcrumbs and come back after you just can't go, go back anymore. Yeah. And sometimes it's sad because, you know, you have to let go of many things in your life. Yeah. Like once your ego got deconstructed to the level that there is no identity anymore, like, and you become an empty vessel of source and life energy, mm. you, you can't, you have to leave like group of friends, family members will not be, you know, in alignment with you anymore. And you are creating, you start to become the creator of your reality. That's an important thing yeah. because on the third dimension, you think that you are everything is by default you know you are not you are not a conscious co-creator of your reality in the fourth and fifth dimension you start to create your reality and people might ask you it's like how do i create my reality <laughs> well it's possible <laughs> it's possible yeah to transform your life yeah yeah okay so what's the i mean what's the what's the benefit for you know the average person or somebody who's seeking. I mean, obviously, everybody who's watching this is seeking in some way, right? Mm -hmm. They're already open to deep conversations and probably have some spiritual practice and um, or they're in business and they're definitely curious, mm -hmm. right? They're definitely curious about being the best versions of themselves. Now, when you're not familiar with these concepts, the best version of yourself is like personal development. How can I be more successful? How can I be more productive? How can I achieve more? Um, how can I communicate better? How can I be a better leader? Very tactical kind of things, right? So what's the benefit for people to tune into it this way? It's effortlessly. Mm. So, you know, there are people who are taking years of trainings and so on. And this is the linear time, you know, they are connected to linear time. And it's like, I have to take this training and this training, this training. And, you know, like I was a high achiever as well. So I was working in a corporate environment where I want to be the best. And, you know, I was. I, I got to that point, but then I had a breakdown <laughs> mm. and I had like, yes, I had a burnout actually. So, you know, you get to that point and then when you are connecting to a non-linear time, because in, in, you know, there is this option to connect. So when you say non-linear time, let's yeah. just explore that. So linear time is like just time in one direction. We just already know that the clock just goes in this direction yes. and it goes from the past to the, to the future. future and that's linear time that's yes. most people's waking experience of how time time works yes so what's the um so let, let me give a story and context so uh because this is a hard concept for people to grasp because mm -hmm. we're like this is just reality the reality we're born into is like we look at the clock and the clock goes this direction so for myself over, especially over the last few years, my experience, my experience of time is different, right? So does that mean that the clock is doing anything different? I don't really know. But my experience, which at the end of the day is all there is. My experience, your experience is all there is, right? Yes. And if my experience of time is different, then what the fuck does it matter what, you know, the clock yes. is doing, right? <laughs> So that's kind of the way I think about it. And when I, when I say my experience of time is different, I'm able to achieve a lot more. It feels like I only work a few hours a day. Um, she, she hates me because um, <laughs> I never get back to her because I'm too busy at the spa, at the gym, doing other things, but I seem to be able to create more and do more. But that, and that's now become my paradigm, mm -hmm. that my experience of time is different and I don't have to be a slave to it. It's like, and, and, I, and I actually use that when I feel like I'm becoming, going back in that direction, I kind of stop and go, oh, let me just do nothing, <laughs> right? And like tune myself back into the other direction and yes. just surrender to, I don't, I don't need to achieve anything. Let me just be here, right? Yes. So explain that from your perspective, because um, that's a very hard thing for me to articulate that my experience of time is different, but is there a tactic there? Is there like, how can people tune into that? Mm -hmm. And what's the, you know, is that, is that important? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. <laughs> and I feel it's, it's, there are some benefits to it as well. Yeah. So, um, the non-linear time is uh, a perception that is totally different. As you said, the experience your time, the time of time is different. And this perception is, uh, 
anchoring you more into the present now, into the present, into the moment now. Because many, because our mind is programmed to either think of the future or the past. But when you stop your thought process and yeah. you are fully anchored into the present now, then you you are accessing this non-linear time. Yeah. So what does that mean? Is that in that presence, you can do so much more. For example, if, if in non-linear mm. time you are working like five hours and you are doing a task, you can do that in a half an hour in so, non-linear so time. So you could say that's almost like the feeling of being in flow where you feel like time has stood still. Like when you're exactly. having, like when you're with somebody and you have like this amazing relation, you know, r amazing conversation or you're out surfing or, you know, something happens and like you kind of lost time. Mm -hmm. You're in that experience of flow because you're super present in the moment. Yes. And yeah. in that flow state and in that experience and different perception of time, you are doing so much more. And this mm -hmm. is why I'm saying that nonlinear time is effortlessly and this has the same benefit because you are doing it in the flow of your heart and your soul. And it's not so much, oh, I have to do this, this and this by this time. And if I'm not doing this, uh, that will like, you know, affect all my schedule and so on. And you get stressed about it. And, <laughs> you know, you are like going in the same cycle. And um, yes, it is a different perception, a different experience. There are benefits around doing doing um, more with less effort mm -hmm. and just going a little bit deeper into um you know, your heart. And you are, you are asking me earlier, like, what are the benefits for, for these people in, to tap into this stream? You know, it's like, why is that important? And I think people can access non-linearity or non-linear time. Um, the more they are connecting to the present, but also the more they're focusing their attention into one place. Mm. Because the mind has the, has the, you know, the programming to focus, to have a distributed attention and to focus your attention in different past, present, future. You know, it, there is like um, the energy and the focus is going in different directions and then you are losing track or where the important reference point for you is. So you always have to have a reference point. The reference point yeah. is now. Yeah. Is this so, making sense? Yeah, it is. It is. And, and look... Um, I mean, this idea of kind of tuning into 5D and like you said, like never coming, never coming back. It's a hard concept for anybody to grasp when you're not, when you've not experienced it. Yes. Right? When you've not had any taste of it, it's like that's super hard to explain. It's like trying to explain what happens on, you know, ayahuasca. It's like, how do you, how do you explain it, right? So the the idea of, and that's why I say, to try to explain it to people is it's like, because people will be asking, will be saying, okay, but the, the clock s still keeps going. You're still in this body. You still have to pay your bills. You still have to talk to your clients at 10 a.m. It's like you're still, li you're still <laughs> living in that world. So people's minds go, well, that doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But the way I explain it is you're still in that reality, but your experience is different. Yes. That's the only way I can explain it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it yeah. is a different experience and um, yes, you are tapping into a different flow well, mm. all, all, all together. Like um, you are still doing the same things, but in a different way and you are relating to time and space differently than before. Yeah. So um, we are tapping into a different layer of your consciousness and yeah, you are still operating in, in the same agreed framework, yes. you know, like we are still doing the same thing, but the, your experience is totally different. Yeah. 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 So, um, and just to kind of, you know, to go down the rabbit hole a little bit on this concept of time, because, um, I, time is something that a society has kind of been fed to us in the, the way that we put so much power into it. Mm -hmm. Like there are tribes in this world living right now who don't operate on clocks. They have a very different experience of time. And I think that's how people used to live thousands of years ago. And then I think it was in the 1500s, the Gregorian calendar was introduced by the church. Mm -hmm. And that was to manipulate people's experience of time. Yes. That's my understanding. Let's like, you know, I can't go back in time and figure that out. Maybe you can, but... <laughs> Um, that's, that's what I feel is, is true. Right. And that was something that's been indoctrinated into us to have some level of control and power. And I think just that awareness of those systems being there is enough for people to go, uh, start asking questions and then start going, oh, maybe, 
let me explore this. Yes. When you have that level of awareness of, you know, these things are happening around you, then you can start to get some power back for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And I will go a little bit back on um, on what you what we we mentioned about how can you explain to others what the fifth dimensional consciousness of non-linear time is when you didn't have the experience, you know. Yeah. And I want to touch base on that, and then I will come back yeah. on the on the on the concept of time. <laughs> <laughs> so it is true um, because. Some people are, are able to receive information on conceptual level, okay, on the mind level. And because mind is operating in, in some templates and uh, programs and framework, then they are trying to take these spiritual or, or higher consciousness concepts mm. and trying to fit into a box there, mm. into that template. And then things will not really make sense because these fifth dimensional concepts or e everything we are speaking here about you know, can't be, can't be fitted into a template anymore. So you need the embodied experience. You need to have a physical experience within your physical body of yeah. what that means, you know? And this is why people are going through this to plant why, medicine that's, journeys. That's why, that's why I like plant medicine because it gives an instant access and an instant, it rattles your paradigm of like, oh, that's how I thought things were. That's not Exactly. And it's not only this, it's giving you an imprint in the chemistry and the, and the neurological system of your body, in the nervous system and electrical system of your body, where you this imprint is recreating an experience in your body. So the body is adapting to that new experience that you just had and there is a knowing your belief system is changing. Mm. So then you had that embodied experience and the, this is how that experience becomes your truth because it's shifting and rewiring your belief system. And, and in that moment, you know that this is a truth and you had an experience and then there is an anchor point, you know, into, okay, I have this belief and that experience and I know how that feels. Yeah. Because if you don't have the feeling, yeah. you know, or you only have the memory or you only have the concept and the concept, you can't grasp those concepts. Yeah, you need to have the feeling, you need to like feel in your trying body. trying to learn to write a bicycle from reading a book. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And this is why many people are not able to grasp these concepts because they didn't have the experiences. Yeah. And how to get the experience, I'm not saying guys to go to do plant medicine now. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you can access it through meditation and you can access it yes, through, through different other, um, you know, even if you go into a vortex and meditate. And when I say vortex, like into a high vibrational place, can be a stone circle or can be, you know, like if you are in Egypt, you can go to the pyramids of Giza yeah. or there are like Joshua tree or whatever. Just go into a place and meditate and connect with those energies. You will start to feel energy. You will start to feel breath something work, in your breath physical works of access. breath work, Wim Hof, like, yeah. you know, any, anything that can break through your mind because the breakthrough is not happening in, in the physical body. It's happening through the layers of the mind. Yeah. And then you will start to have a physical experience and, and imprint that. And then, you know, you know, it's like, you know what is okay and and then you know how to to navigate yeah. and then going back to the concept of time and how that was a tool for manipulation and enslaving humanity it is true because um you know when we are this is just a concept so time doesn't exist okay and when people are saying this this is a reality on its own because it's just a a, a projection that is coming from a collective global belief system that time exists and uh, it, it was a way of manipulating and creating limitations within the greater uh, consciousness and, and how we can experience reality. Because when we are experiencing the reality based on time, mm. there is already a, a, a limitation to it. So we don't have the freedom. Our freedom grid is like so tiny, you know, it's taking you the freedom. And when the freedom grid is, is affected, then all other uh, aspects of you are, are, are affected, like, you know, your happiness, your joy, mm. your capacity to expand, to evolve, you know, because you don't have the freedom. You are like trapped into a, into, into a template. Yeah. So uh, there's, there's some people I, I look up to that, and people say this of me all the time, like I, t I tell them my business projects. I'm like, okay, I've got a company doing this. I'm, I'm an advisor to four other businesses. I run a podcast with a team. I'm building projects here in Bali. And people automatically assume because of their understanding of time, like, oh, my God, you're so busy. And I think to myself, actually, I didn't do much today. <laughs> right. And there's people I look up to mm -hmm. who are doing way more things and they live healthy lives and, um, you know, they're successful. They've got good relationships. They've got all these things mm -hmm. weaved together. And I happen to think that, their experience of time is just different to most people's. 
And there That's are also it. people that, you know, they are doing just a couple of things a day and they feel like they have no time. Yeah. You know, they are doing like, I don't know, they're just going to their job and when they're coming back, they're so uh, exhausted, they can't even connect to their children. Yeah. And it, this is like, you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's about also the, the freedom grid, but also the perception about time and how you can mm -hmm. utilize it in your benefit yeah. and to, to disconnect a little bit of the, of the collective grid of perception of time yeah. and space. All right, so let's let's go down the rabbit hole a little bit deeper. So, all right, tell us about you know the next dimensions. Like, is there a six D, seven D? Does it go to nine D? What 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 can, happens? Can after go that? As, as much as we want, but yeah. um, all these dimensions, you know, for for the greater public and audience, are just potentialities of love. Yeah. And when I say that, is because uh, we are love, and you know, there are. There are different perceptions that people have about feelings and there are feelings created by the mind and feelings experienced through the heart. And um, I like to see the dimensions as opportunities or invitations for our consciousness to evolve, but also, um, you know, a greater potentiality of embodying the love that we already are. And this is a concept which people can take it as it is but when you are when you are feeling it and when you are into that like you realize that there are there is so much potentiality that you can't even embody you know yeah. into into one go this is why there are layers of of the journey that we are breaking through you know so the higher dimensions are different levels of consciousness different levels of potentialities of love and different layers of and levels of experiencing ourselves so, you know, we can go in the third dimension, there is a limited view of reality. In the fourth dimension, you start to be on the bridge and start to, okay, there are like different realities. On the fifth dimension, your multidimensionality is integrated. On the sixth dimension, you have the option if you want to be in a physical or non-physical body. Mm -hmm. It's like, there is so much more to it, yeah. you know? But this is, this is like a map, how other civilizations evolve to where they are. So this is, this is where I want to lead it to, because I mean, this idea of ascension means different things to different people. Um, and most people would think ascension is like, yeah, just raising consciousness and, you know, we're all just going to get better, right? Mm -hmm. Humanity is going to get better. But what you're saying and what I've read things about, which might blow people's minds a little bit, is that we ascend, our consciousness ascends beyond the physical so that there is no physical form and we are beings, if you like. We're, so ex explain that. So the evolution of consciousness is happening in different ways and there is a there is a process of uh, dismantling the global or the collective belief because everything that we are living in this reality uh, like we are everything is energy and when i say everything is energy it's like everything that we perceive as being solid in our physical reality mm. is just a frequency but then explain to to someone that this is a frequency. I'm standing in this chair and I feel the texture. I feel, you know, the leather of this chair. I see the color and, you know, explain that this, this, is, this is not real. This, <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. People will start laughing. It's like, no, this is a chair. And I'm saying, no, this is an energy. It's a yeah. frequency representation yeah. of energy. Yeah. So it doesn't really exist. It's a perception from our senses. It is a perception through our senses. So when, mm. when we go beyond our senses, you know, there is so much freedom into that greed. And then we are able to access more of who we are and the physical body represents only 10 percent of mm. who we are the rest of us is non-physical so because we are you know a non-physical being and just the physicality it's only 10 percent of who we are then we are not physically focused anymore so when we are not physically focused we, we get access to what's happening beyond the veils so what's happening beyond the veils because you're getting messages from beings yes spirits what do you call them Collective consciousness. Okay. So is there, can you kind of, is there a way to articulate what that looks like? And like, does, you know, how, how, how could you paint the picture for people of what that is? And, and, and you talk about, there's a council of, yes. talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I was, uh, okay. I will take a, I give a little bit of a context how I yeah. got there, you know, cause, um, it happened overnight, but it's, it's a, it's an interesting journey. 
So um, I was working for 15 years in, in these corporations and I have a burnout and that was my initiation into this. I was fully activated. My consciousness got fully activated into something else because I thought that I'm going to stay in the matrix. I was not spiritual. I didn't read any books of spirituality and stuff. And I didn't. You, so you never experienced anything when you were young or? Nothing. Really so young. I was like fully, fully okay. into that stream of reality. And I wanted, you know, like I want to do what, what others were doing. You know, that was my aim, mm. you know, and my goal. So suddenly I just had like a burnout and I uh, like everything had been activated in my consciousness and I started to wake up to a different reality. I, I literally started to see frames of overlapping uh, parallel realities mm. and that freaked me out because <laughs> I started to see different things that other people didn't see yeah. and I said, oh my God, what's this? And then my journey started and um, I started to connect to different uh, civilizations from the higher realms of existence that you know people are calling alien civilizations mm -hmm. uh, i don't really like the word alien but I, I like to call them light beings but let's put in advanced civilizations that are here to support the ascension process and okay so when people think of aliens we yes. think we're like our perception is like there's ufos flying around from other planets and they've got little you know beings in them which are like us but our relationship or understanding of what those beings are and their flying sources are based on what we're experiencing through this body and our aeroplanes and look, we conceptualize that from our own paradigms, right? Yes. But what you're saying is that it's not like that. No, at all. Not at all. So this, they are uh, this council that I'm connecting to yes. and these civilizations are interdimensional civilizations. They have non-physical form and there are like a soul, a group soul that mm. have a very advanced consciousness. And they decided as a group soul to become non-physical and help not only planet Earth, but also other planets in the same time. So uh, what does that mean is that their existence is non-physical non and they are omnipresent. It's like source energy, you know, like... Um, it's it's everywhere in the same mm. time but being able to have like different focus points on vessels of light or messengers like me so so do you think that it's going to be normal one day that everybody's going to see ufos and aliens and mystical things and i feel like it will be very normal one day to for for people to open their consciousness in in seeing beyond this reality yeah so because when, so when people say they saw something and somebody else didn't it's because in that moment they were open to something else that, in that moment that the they were, wasn't. Yeah, because we are living in different realities. Even yeah. if we think we are in, like we are sharing the same framework, but yeah. each of us we are living in a different reality. So then yeah. we have a different re receptivity and different frequency. And I can be here with you and I can see something and have a conversation with, with some somebody that you don't see. And it's not because it's just about the frequency alignment, yeah. you know. So I, I feel like one day, globally, people will align mm. on that. And this is where people are saying unity consciousness. This is know? an interesting concept because I've, I've never really studied too much or read too much about this, what you're saying, unity consciousness. But I have always had the idea in my mind that different things come to, come to be real in the global consciousness based on the number of people that are now attuning to it. Yes. Right? Yes. This is why I use UFOs as the example because I think more and more people are going to be seeing them and open to it to the point where then it just becomes real for everybody. Yes. Is, does that sound about right? Yeah, it sounds about right because it's about like the belief system of the collective yes. consciousness. Yes. So the belief create a reality. Yeah. So this is where we understand, and you know, the part of the teachings that I am delivering to to the to the ones that are ready is empowerment. Because when you start to become empowered and you access all these abilities and you know that you are creating your reality mm. based on your belief, then you understand how much your unique belief system is affecting the the, the collective yeah. and how people coming together that they have the same belief system are creating the reality yeah. the the general common reality yeah. of everywhere where ev ev everyone is coming together and they, there is an agreement that i see these glasses being with water or without water so yeah. the, we have a collective agreement seeing the same thing yeah. if we don't have a collective agreement there will only be odd ones that are seeing and the others are not seeing because there is no yeah. alignment and is that, is that why you think there's so much frac fracture at the moment because there's more people awakening and there's People and people who are stuck in the matrix, they're holding on so tightly yes. that there's so much separation now yes. between people that are there and there. 
Whereas if everybody's just in the matrix and nobody's seeing anything, exactly. like everybody can just kind of get along. Like, yeah, let's just live in the matrix. But yeah. now there's a lot of separation and a lot of disunity and a lot of fighting. And you know, in, in hundreds of years back and thousands of years back, everyone was in the matrix and yeah. everyone had a, like the same alignment and agreement about what's happening. And there were like this genius of people yeah. that, that, you know, they were like poets and artists and, you know, scientists that they came up and yeah. like, whoa, you know, Einstein that started to speak about the uh, relativity te te theory and all of that. He was explaining the quantum field already, you know, and... It's just like there are people that from the collective metrics that they start to to awaken and they start to access these abilities that they didn't other people didn't had, mm. and but more and more now we are tapping into a streamline of of everyone is starting to access uh, different abilities and it's like you know. Is this a separation that's happening, you know, between the 3D, 4D, and 5D? I yeah. don't really like to call it separation. I always see it as an invitation because we are evolving. So yeah. it's uh, you can, we can't control the change. And the frequencies on this planet uh, are so intense right now that it's not only a decision of the individual anymore. It's like we are taken by, by Gaia, by Earth, by Earth consciousness into this journey. So there are people that they don't want to awaken and they are awakening. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's true. And this, it's not. It's it's just it's just that uh, you know the the Gaia consciousness is start working. Their energies that are beamed on this planet now uh, are very intense. So mm. yeah, and that's why I just have the feeling, the knowing that that's what's on the other side for humanity. I mean, it might not be the case that in my lifetime we you know see see anything significant, but you know that's yeah. That's well, it, when 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 it comes to what we are able to experience, is yes, uh, the collective will experience an evolution, and we are going to evolve, and you mm. know the systems will collapse, and things are going to happen on this planet that will take us to the next level of our evolution, yeah. and might not look the way we want it to look, you know, and might not, might we will not, might not experience that the way we want to experience because it's beyond the collective control. So then, but then we are recreating a new planet and another, you know, another way of existence, and we are, you know, deconstructing everything and and creating a new way of relating. To, yeah. our, to each other, to ourselves, to the community, to, you know, the global community. And yeah. I do see in the future, like, this incredible global community created where people are operating from the heart consciousness and, you know, different hubs of light created all over the planet. Yeah. There are people already creating eco-villages and, you know, they, they start doing in incredible work, like creating oasis of light where uh, light leaders can come and um, start to to build something different. There is yeah. a different infrastructure because the old infrastructure is crumbling. It's going to be dismantled very soon. So then we are creating something new already. Yeah. Let, me, let me touch on something here because um, one of the things that, that, that is a bit of a perception out there in the mainstream is, you know, people look at, you know, you use, you use the term light leaders. Um, people might look at those things as being like super woo-woo and ungrounded, mm -hmm. right? And how, I think that there is a path for everybody to kind of tune into, you know, that ability to be a light leader or whatever. But I agree that there are a lot of ungrounded spiritual kind of people, right? Yes. And when we're searching for something, we feel like something is missing, a lot of people take this overly spiritual approach and they just jump yes. straight into that right and then they lose all sense of groundedness and they become lost yes they lost in that i want to speak about this yeah. yeah and then what happens is everybody else looks at that and goes oh that's what spiritual is mm -hmm. that that's not helpful right exactly that's just another version of being lost mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so how do we how do we resolve that perception because yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, and it is a reality and that's the truth. You know, there yeah. are many people that are awakening, let's put it in this way, where they start to become spiritual and they are like, you know, selling their houses, selling their cars, selling their clothes, going on to the seeker mode, you know, and they start to become like uh, accessing suddenly, like they become like poverty, po more, yeah. more poor than before. And, and they, they live in, they live in Ubud and, and they live wherever yeah. <laughs> right here and look, you know, yeah. start to do like yoga and meditation and they are like completely lost yeah. and ungrounded. And, um, 
it's a journey. It's, it's very interesting because I had that tendency for a second mm. myself because, you know, I worked for 15 years in corporations and I had like, you know, I, I acquire some, some goods and, you know, like savings and so on. And I, I, I did a trip to India. And when I went to India, I had that tendency. It's like, um, you know, I didn't quite like the environment there because it was like, I saw spiritual people uh, like living in scarcity, you know, and I had that tendency is like, do I need to take that journey or like what mm. journey should I take now? What should I choose now? You know? And I was like, no, that's not me. And I don't feel that the new earth will be built from that, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And I saw, I, I don't want to judge anyone, but like I saw how many people are going into this consciousness like stream of like we are spiritual and you know because we are spiritual we don't have to be abundant or we don't have to 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 have prosperity in our lives and we have to all of us we have to be the same and this is like um, you know the i want to see the dark side of spirituality yeah. you know because people are going on to the other side and they are not grounded and they are not actually contributing anywhere yeah. to anything you know so for me it's always a balance you know in between like you know, okay, it's okay to awaken and access this higher level of consciousness. Then the question is like, how do you use this? How do you practically bring that to the world? How do you bring your message? And part of my teaching is not only to activate people in divine service and how they are here, you know, to, 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 to deliver their messages and to speak and, uh, you know, activating them into their power, but also how to bring all these spiritual teachings into the 3D and create a business you know, and, and, and wave, uh, business with spirituality yeah. and bring that as a formula is a, is a uniqueness that you are bringing to the world and inspire others as well. Yeah. And the way I see it is, uh, I mean, cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not teaching anything spiritual, but what I like to think is I'm bringing my spirituality through what I do. Yes. Right. And I think that that is an approach which is more powerful for a lot of people because people are putting, uh, power in, the spirituality or mm -hmm. in the law of attraction or in the, the, the tool or the, the, you know, whatever that thing is that they're attracted to, where it, in actual fact, it's like you can go about whatever you were doing before and have that spirituality go through you and bring it to whatever you're doing. Yes. And then that is actually how you tune into whatever is your higher purpose or whatever. It's through how you're being, how you throw, show up. Exactly. How you yeah. show up, how present you are, how you relate. And yeah. it is a shift of consciousness, but this doesn't like you are bringing it, you know, your message to the world through what you are doing, yeah. uh, actually. And, um, you know, I'm always seeing, um, you know, the business as a tool for divine service. It's mm -hmm. just like an, an entry point. Of how do you serve others as well? So but there are there are indeed you know from the 3d people that are looking to the spiritual this this image you know of people going and you know like letting go of their go like all, all all that they acquired and becoming a seeker and wearing white clothes and having yeah. no money and you know being lost and yeah. ungrounded it and doesn't have to be like that i mean i have no. a studio and I, and I have crystals you know <laughs> <laughs> and and I do believe that the new new earth and a new world will not be built by people that are lost and ungrounded. And and you know part of the ascension is dissension. It's coming back into your physical body and yeah. accepting that we are here in these bodies and we have to work with this and through this. Yeah. We are bringing the teachings from the higher realms into the body. And, and this is another good point because uh, I think a lot of people also get lost in that spiritual idea of ascending beyond this body. And then that becomes their major goal. It's mm -hmm. like to just ascend to the point where I'm nothing or whatever that, whatever that looks like for them. But when in actual fact, what you're talking about is how do you, how do you weave, weave this together? Like how yes. do you, how can you embrace that, but then bring it back to this body? It is a journey and, and, and the journey is like when people are awakening, it's like the automated re, automatic re, re response. And I will tell you more about that is, is like they, they want to leave their bodies yeah. and it's like, don't leave your body. And the reason for that is because they are accessing their subconscious mind where there is so much unresolved things yeah. and there is so much pain and, and there is an something. exercise of dissociation, yes. you know, yeah. and they have to dissociate themselves and, and make a life purpose of, of identifying their star origin is like, no. And, you know, I'm bringing teachers from the stars and people are coming to me it's like i'm a star seed and i was like well done but now come back in your body yeah. and let's see how much more of the of that you are because yeah. people then are creating identities it's like oh i'm this and that it's like no you are not this and you are this and that and 
what is more than that mm-hmm. so then you know coming back into the bo- into the body is a journey of taking the journey through the subconscious mind and and looking of all unresolved stuff and all the pain and suffering and trauma and everything that is there to be released and to be worked on and you know there is a, a, a lot of i don't really like to call shadow work mm-hmm. because that's a beautiful light work to be honest it's not so much shadow even if we are going through the depths of your being and you are accessing feelings and emotions that you didn't probably access before at that depth and intensity but but it, it's all so much more potentiality in, in aligning your subconscious with conscious mind in doing that work. Yeah. So the process of ascension is a process of descension and how we descend in our physical body. And yes, we can be in the physical body. We can access different dimensions without leaving the physical body and we can enjoy everything because it is a physical experience. Even, even accessing seven dimension, you feel it through your body that you are going there. Yeah. So. Cool. No, I, I mean, I, I, I love this conversation and hopefully we've been able to bring some um, esoteric kind of concepts and, you know, make them make them tangible for people. So um, a few final questions, but um, I'm also curious to know what are your um, what are your habits? You know, like you live a healthy life, like what are your daily rituals and practices and mm-hmm. do you meditate every day. What is what does that look like? Well, I am very intentional every morning. So when I wake up in the morning, I I set up my daily intentions Mm -hmm. and um, I meditate, but I'm not meditating hours, you know, like we can meditate 10 minutes and fully access ourselves. And um, I'm living my daily life in presence and gratitude. Like Mm -hmm. I'm very present what's happening and I'm really focusing the moment. Um, And I'm trying to live a life like for example my diet is very clean and stuff but it's not that i have to do it it's just a choice my body can't take some foods and some drinks that i used to to, to drink anymore mm. and there is no i don't really like this template of of how a spiritual person sh- 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 uh, should be you mm. know like to become vegan or, and no i feel yeah. like you should give to your body exactly what your body needs and to but truly do you, do you feel like there are f- foods that we consume that f- stop thwart our access yes. to our higher self yes they yes. are there are and there are the, den- the dense foods you know the, yeah. the foods that are creating the density and the lower the lower vibration um and meat is one of them you mm. know it's like you don't eat meat because it's it's just a different frequency than our bodies and yeah like alcohol is another one and sometimes coffee and everything that is bringing to, into your mind and you know making you in that action driven mode um it's good to be in action inspired mode, you know, yeah. action uh, inspired driven mode, <laughs> not only driven, you know, not only from the mind. Yeah. But yes, there are like specific uh, foods and drinks. And um, I feel this is important, you know, to be taken mm. into account for everyone that wants to improve their well being. It doesn't need to be for a spiritual reason, it's no, just and, the well being. And like you said, I don't think there's any one exact template. I think it's different for different people as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. And it's good, you know, for us to listen to our bodies and to yeah. ask our bodies, what does my body want or yeah. needs now? But that's what we're talking about here. And uh, like this being hyper present, like you're talking about all day, is something that I, I try to practice. Um, and I have kind of practices where I, if I'm working for long periods of time, it's like I set a timer and I, you know, just breathe for a minute and kind of get myself present and because I can get lost in that. So I'm trying to put little booby traps in place mm-hmm. so that I can, you know, be more present throughout the day. And then that just becomes organic. It just evolves and becomes more and more and more. Um, but that also allows you to, yeah, become more attuned to everything, including who you surround yourself with, the food that, that you eat, everything. everything you consume. So. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, I truly re- recommend to everyone to connect more with Mother Nature and to yeah. spend time in in nature on your own. It's the greatest teacher that yeah. we always have had, and it's available for us. And you know, like the more we make ourselves available to nature and to ourselves, the more we can um, expand our consciousness and have like literally have a very fulfilled and healthy life. Yeah. Because this is what we want. Cool. So I got um, I got one final question for you, but um, before we do that, how do people find you? If people want to learn more about these kind of things, is there something that like 
you how can people reach you instagram or what's the best platform yeah so uh, they can find me on instagram yeah. um at arcturians channeling and um on facebook at livia devi or my uh, website is uh, liviadevi.com okay and i have i'm offering different programs for the ones that are ready to take a journey yeah cool <laughs> uh, well, we'll make sure everybody's got the links and we'll put the links and um yeah, so everyone's got instant access. Go check it out. Um, so uh, final question, and this is the question I ask everybody, is if you had a one-time superpower, now this kind of sounds strange asking it to you because you probably do have the superpower, <laughs> but the question that I ask is if you had the one-time superpower of mental telepathy and being able to connect a message to all of humanity hmm. in one bite-sized kind of peace what would that message be mm. open to the unconditional love and compassion within yourself yeah this is the message and this is how i'm always teaching love and compassion and understanding and um receiving these are the keys that i'm always using awesome Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Olivia, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. It's been super insightful, very interesting to me, as I'm sure it has been to many people. Guys, thank you so much. Make sure you go check out Olivia. Click on the links. Go follow her on Instagram. And uh, I'll see you back down the rabbit hole real soon.